Hello and welcome back to my channel, G's Louise. My name's Louise and today I have three things to do for you. So I'm going to show you how I make um, custom watercolor palette in these tins and I'm also going to show you how I made this custom watercolor sketchbook. Actually this is not only watercolor, it's a lot of different kinds of paper but you can put whatever you want in it. And I'm also going to test out some watercolor paints I got from a convenience store here in Denmark. It's actually a German brand store. It's called Lidl. Um, I will put uh, the name here also, but I'm really curious about these paints because they claim to be artist quality and they were only 22 kroners, which is about... Um, three dollars for a set of 12 paints and they are all 12 milliliter tubes and I'm really curious to see if they are any good or if they are a typical um, student grade quality but yeah they claim to be t uh, watercolor paints 12 paints suitable for artists of all abilities with a matte finish Create wonderful color gradients and washes, suitable for all watercolor techniques. Obviously, since they are watercolor paints. And in that same splurge, I also got some chalk pastels, also $3. And I got two packs of giant brushes. Um, they say they are for oil, acrylic and watercolor already skeptical there but they are fine flexible synthetic hair and these were 35 Danish kroners which is about five dollars for each pack and they look pretty standard I think um, they do fray a bit already so yeah I'm just curious to see if they are any good because I always love cheap paint brushes and I also got this giant um, tube of acrylic paint in white because I'm out um, and yeah it was, it was cheap so today I'm also going to use this one which is a watercolor palette I recently made myself and if you're curious to know how I made it and want me to do a video on how to make these um, Let's say if I get like 50 likes on this video, I will totally do this because then I know you would love to see a video on this. Um, I am planning on doing one with like a Disney theme with a Mickey Mouse head and I'm also um, going to make one for my sister because she really wanted a dish for her jewelry. But that's enough talking, let's get into the video. Once you have all of your pieces cut out, all of the pages, um, I do have some of my pages who have to turn a certain way, so I just mark that with a piece of post-it. I'm going to lay them over here just for a minute because now I'm going to work on the cover pages. 
and for that I am going to cover them with this material. I got it at the Susanne Green store. It's a Danish store. I'm not sure if it's anywhere else. I do believe it's in England as well. It says here it's washable craft paper so you can make your own creations by sewing, gluing, printing, painting, etc. And that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint on it. So I'm going to cut the two pieces out and glue them to these ones. And for this one you make want to make sure that you take in consideration the flat part. So I'm just placing it kind of low right here. So you can see I have a nice edge here for when I want to fold it over. And I also have this part where I can bend it and make it into a nice flap. So I'm going to place this one under pressure as well, rinse my brush and wait about half an hour and then come back to you. So I think I'm just going to glue that down and then I can do this the sides. But I'm going to take the easy one first.
I want this cream color here because I'm going to do that um, vintage type of letter. So I'm going to take these, put them in here. Let's see if they match. I think that looks nice. And then I'm going to press them. So it's definitely foldable, this one. And it has to fold over all of this paper and the other piece. I'm just marking off approximately where I want the hole to go for the elastic band. So I think it should be here. And it could actually be a bit tricky with this one, so I'm just going to do it multiple times from both sides because it's a bit thinner and these tools tend not to work with thin paper, but I think it worked fine this time. The base is actually done now. I'm just going to have to put an elastic right here and then it looks like an envelope.
All right, so I have everything laid out here. I have my paints, I have my tins all cleaned out. I have the little cards to go inside and I have some pans and some magnets because they do stick better if you put these on like that. See? And I did try to stick all 12 of these pans into one tin but they just don't fit. So either I have to take out one color or I have to put them in two tins and I think for now I'm just going to put them in two tins and maybe one day I will rearrange it or put them in one larger tin because it's nice to have them all together but that's just what I'm doing for now so let's just put these on all of these Actually, I managed to squeeze all of these paints in here, so if you want to copy the layout, this is how I did it. I have four up here, I have four in the middle, and four down here, so these are just tilted rather than these. And they are really snuck in here. Um, so yeah, that's one way to do it, and now I can't get it in again. Okay, there. So this is one way to do it if you want all of your 12 paints into one tin. So this is a really snug set. But I'm actually going to put these in another tin I have because I want to use these tins for my Daniel Smith paints. And I have one of these which are which is a blue tin, so I'm just going to use that one instead. So I have to take all these out again and put them in the other tin. There it is, all nice, and now it's time for the fun part to pour in all this paint. The funny thing about these is they are actually not like a metal tube. They are plastic, even though they look like metal. But yeah, let's see how they look. So I just unboxed all of the brushes and they do fray all of them but they feel really soft and yet still really stiff. So I reckon you can do like acrylic or watercolor with them. I'm not really into oils so I can't really say anything about that. But let me just show you the triple zero brush. It doesn't really hold a point but I guess you can use it still. And Another funny thing I found in the packaging because on the packaging it says to hold on to the box if you have any future questions, which is alarming to me. But look at this instructional manual it came with. It says, let me open it. Congratulations on the purchase of your new product. You have chosen a high quality product. 
that is really interesting. I've never bought a set of watercolors that came with an instruction. Um, so yeah, let's really put these to the test and see if they are actually high quality. I'm not really sure I'm going to do a light fastness test on these. It doesn't state anything about the pigments or light fastness, but if you want me to do something like that with these paints, let me know in the comments down below. That could be really fun to test and yeah, I'm not really sure what they mean when they say high quality. That could be anything from light fastness to like the performance, etc. So yeah, let's test these out. Okay, so I've just finished swatching and let's just get real. These are insanely chalky. I would put these on a line with like koi watercolors and even further down. Um, there's nothing wrong with koi watercolors if you have them, but I just think they are really chalky and if you like cross your finger over it, like this, if you rub it on your finger, it has that chalky sound, if you can hear it. These ones have that same sound. Um, I think I tried the Tiger paints from the Tiger store and I think these are same quality range. Um, I mean, they're okay, they're not really that vibrant, they are you can see there's kind of that matte finish and they did say that they were matte finish um, so in that way they didn't lie but I would not say that these are artist quality I would say these are school quality not even student grade um, but yeah what did you expect for like three dollars so this is what I have to work with and now I'm just going to play around with them and see if they mix or if they turn into mud and if I can make something nice with it. Hello and welcome to the voiceover part of this video. As you can see, I just did my nails for this video in a cute rainbow because I love rainbows as much as Mariah Elizabeth. So, let's get into the testing of these paints. So, as you can see, I'm just doing a really light wash on both of these mushroom characters. One of them is a ballet dancer and the other one is just a bell mushroom. I'm really into mushrooms lately, I don't know why, but I just really, really love to do these cute characters. And I'm just trying to get, like, darker tones with these paints, but it is just impossible. I don't know why, but they are really pastel -y, so if you want a pastel set, don't buy these. <laughs> really, um, I don't really think these are for adults. I would say if you have a five-year-old who really wants to do watercolor, this is a great set. They're really cheap, but I wouldn't get them if I'm an adult who wants to be serious about my art or even just has it as a hobby. You can also see the brushes here. They're like they're great, they're fine, but the triple zero one does not 
hold a point at all. Actually, I found it to be better to do gra grass with um, because it has these frayed bristles. So that's one thing it's good for. Um, but yeah, I don't really have much else to say about these paints other than they are what I kind of expected and then not yet really. Um, I had maybe too high hopes for these paints. But they are chalky, they are school grade, and they are only worth $3. So yeah, as I said, if you have a kid who wants to try out watercolor and wants to have a, a bit more of a fancy set that doesn't look like those small Crayola pens, you can totally get this, but I would not get this if I knew how they were. Um, but yeah, I think I got some decent art out of it after all and that just goes to show that it's not the quality of the art supplies it's the like experience of the artist i think but um yeah get something better than this um yeah that's all i have to say and i really hope you enjoyed this video even though it's a long video but there was a lot of content and i really enjoyed making this video for you guys so if you enjoyed it as much as i did making it you should totally subscribe to my channel for a lot of more fun content coming up and remember to hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on all of these fun new videos i have coming and yeah if you liked it don't hesitate to hit the like button and if you didn't like it you can totally hit the un like button um but yeah, thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of the video. And as we say in Denmark, hi hi!